This video has mild spoilers for Volume 3 of the manga, which at time of recording has yet to be released in English. If you want to read Volume 3 completely surprised, don't watch this video until after October 17th. She loves to cook and she loves to eat, or tsukuritai onna to tabetai onna in Japanese, is a Josei manga series by Sakaomi Yuzaki about a single woman named Nomoto Yuki who works at an office and loves to cook in her free time. But cooking for just herself can be a bit lacking. Nomoto wants to cook grand feasts with large portions, multiple components, or both. A gyoza party, an Indian feast, a supersized omurice, a supersized flan, it can be a bit miserable eating such feasts by oneself and dealing with the inevitable aftermath or less than optimal leftovers, so Nomoto has to either eat those less than optimal leftovers or opt out of her passion entirely. Then one day, she finds herself alone in an elevator with Kasuga Tonako, a neighbor she doesn't know very well. It's awkward enough already to have to share an elevator ride with a stranger, but even more awkward when Nomoto notices the huge volume of takeout fried chicken Kasuga is carrying home to eat all by herself. A conversation is struck. Nomoto asks Kasuga over to help eat some extra food she cooked, and Kasuga and Nomoto become food friends. Nomoto cooks, Kasuga eats. But of course, there's a lot more to it than that. Each woman's relationship with food reveals a struggle they have with womanhood. Nomoto struggles with the pressures put on her by family and by society because of her gender. When will you get married and have children? Oh, you love to cook? You'll make some man a great wife someday. It's like, heaven forbid she cooks because she enjoys it. It has to be for a man. Meanwhile, Kasuga is tall, fat, and fed up with society's insistence on small portion sizes being one of the two genders. Kasuga's own mother blatantly favored the comfort of the men in the family, surrendering the biggest and choiciest food to the patriarch and son, and leaving not enough for her daughter or even for herself. In a world where women are supposed to be petite, restrained, and submissive, Kasuga's large size and independent disposition make her an outsider. Also, both women are lesbians. And that was how She Loves to Cook and She Loves to Eat was first pitched to me, a wholesome lesbian romance centered around food. And that's not inaccurate. It is a wholesome lesbian romance centered around food. And while I'm not a lesbian, I am sapphic and I love cooking and eating, so the premise intrigued me. So I read, and I was immediately charmed by the cute, wholesome chemistry between the two food lesbians. And I giggled every time Nomoto nervously asked Kasuga over to eat food, or asked her out to eat food, or asked to celebrate a holiday with her so they could eat food. Oh, the food! Omurice, ebirice, oden, yaki onigiri, makizushi. I'm not even the biggest fan of Japanese food, and all those illustrations put me in the mood. But there's also donuts, fruit sandwiches, gyoza, a cute kumasan bento, fried roast beef, and a giant flan, just to name a few. In She Loves to Cook and She Loves to Eat, I saw the joy of food and the joy of sharing it with someone who gets you, clicks with you, makes you feel safe to be yourself. What a familiar feeling. But as I read, I found a kinship with Nomoto besides food, her detached feeling from her parents, uncomfortable comments about boyfriends or husbands whenever she shares her love of cooking, confused loneliness over teen friends dating, feeling like there's something wrong with her because she doesn't fit the mold. Even when Nomoto did a little soul searching and discovered she was a lesbian, she still didn't feel like she was doing lesbianism correctly that she just didn't fit in with other lesbians. It's when Nomoto strikes up a friendship with an ace lesbian that she discovers she might be an ace lesbian herself. Now, aces and lesbians do share a lot in common, and there's plenty of memes to back me up here, but ace lesbians also exist. You can be ace and still desire a relationship with a specific gender or genders. And as an ace woman who was romantically attracted to all genders, including women, it was incredibly validating for me to see a sapphic ace woman gabbing about her crush to another sapphic ace woman in a manga. Just as validating as it was to see Nomoto and Kasuga bond over food, over planning food, over shopping for food, over cooking food, over eating food, over watching each other eat food. Just as validating as seeing the close relationship they form that is clearly more than a friendship, but is not stereotypically sexual, neither overtly romantic. I believe it was by no accident that this ace lesbian love story was centered around food. The ace community often uses cake as their symbol. It comes from the practice of some desserts being compared to sex or described as better than sex by people who are not ace. 
For many aces, cake literally is better than sex. I mean, have you had cake? It's tender, moist crumb. It's soft, silky frosting. It's sleek, glossy exterior. <laughs> Ooh, I hope this video doesn't get demonetized. Food and appetite are some of the best analogies aces have for describing the ace experience. Think of being ace as like sitting at a table at a party. Everyone else at the party is drooling over the smell and sight of the food, moaning and smiling as they take their first bites to sate their hunger, and sighing in contentment after they've eaten. And maybe you're sitting there and you recognize that the food looks and smells good, but it doesn't trigger a physiological response like drooling or stomach growling. Maybe you don't feel any butterflies in your stomach from the sight or smell of the food. Maybe you don't fantasize about eating food, but you still enjoy the sensation of chewing and swallowing it and feeling full. Maybe you do get physiologically excited about food by its smell and sight, but only for a particular dish, and only after you've eaten it many times and developed a familiarity and bond with it. And maybe you're never hungry and the idea of eating food repulses you. If you want to understand the ace spectrum, these food analogies are a great place to start. And if you're looking for good ace or queer representation in media, She Loves to Cook and She Loves to Eat is a great place to start. And even if you aren't looking for good queer representation, it's a satisfying story that you should read anyway. But you don't have to take my word for it! Okay, that joke was for like 2% of the audience. I reached out to Caleb Cook, the translator for the English version of the series, to ask him what he loves about She Loves to Cook and She Loves to Eat, and this is what he said. Out of the 60 or so manga series I've translated, She Loves to Cook and She Loves to Eat is easily top three when it comes to quality of the writing, story, characters, and how much I actually enjoy doing the work. There's really something special about a series aimed at adults that presents realistic characters living their realistic lives and speaking like realistic humans through well-considered yet plausible dialogue, all masterfully presented in a way that really bridges any cultural divide. A Western reader might not be familiar with every Japanese ingredient used, that's where my glossary comes in, but plenty of us know exactly what it's like to want to avoid an awkward elevator ride with a borderline acquaintance. It's those little touches, and keeping it all so grounded is one effective way to tackle such inherently heavy topics, creating a story that's relatable whether you're in the LGBTQ community, generally fed up with patriarchy, not on the best terms with family, dealing with disordered eating, just trying to survive the daily grind as a young adult, or heck, indulging in the same barely concealed fetish as Nomoto. I'm three for six there, personally. And despite the all too real issues presented, which dive into some dark places, the story is always buoyed by a life-affirming undercurrent that keeps me smiling as I translate. When I first started reading Tsukuritai Onna to Tabetai Onna, I remember excitedly telling my husband that night, So I started reading this manga series called She Loves to Cook and She Loves to Eat. It's about two lesbians whose relationship is based off food. And without skipping a beat, my husband replied, No, oh, so it's us. In case it wasn't already clear, this manga series is special to me in a personal way. A sapphic ace woman who loves to cook epic feasts and finds joy in sharing them with someone she loves? Never before have I felt so seen! Food is my love language. Whether it's planning epic Indian feasts for my husband's birthday, him cooking me a fancy dinner for mine, cooking and eating every burger from the Bob's Burgers Burger Book, or planning and cooking our elaborate Friendsgiving dinners together. Cooking and eating has been a big part of our relationship, from the very first time we hung out and I made us a pizza from scratch. Planning and sharing food and watching my husband enjoy my cooking gives me so much ace joy, and so did watching Nomoto and Kasuga do the same. And whether you're ace or not, I hope it gives you joy too. So the big video I've been teasing for the past year is coming along! Just thought I'd throw this together in the meantime because I really do love this series and I wanted to promote it. Volume 4 of the Japanese version is coming out tomorrow and I am so excited! Thanks to that dang dad for reading the quote and big thanks to my patrons for sticking around even though most of my work on these channels is currently going on behind the scenes. A special thanks to Tony Hoyt, Matt Mack, Brent, Velos, Roel, Cody Spence, Alexei, Leigh, Jacob Bell, Greg, Henry Roaming, and Datafox.